4th of April, so I have 11 days to prepare from today. And I've never done one of these. This is just me collecting info from like the markets that I've been to and maybe the things that I think would be nice to have there. So the number one thing that I wanted to make sure I did was have a way for people to contact me after the market. So I wanted to make sure that I made business cards and I designed my business cards in Canva. I love Canva. If you've ordered a mini group piece, you know I hand stamp all my tags and stuff like that and my thank you cards. So I wanted my logo to be hand stamped, but I couldn't fathom the idea of hand stamping every single business card. Basically all I do is hand stamped mini group studios and then i scanned it on my phone and then put that into canva then i just put it into the avery website you can print business cards you can print labels stickers everything on the avery website so i highly recommend them so this is how they turned out it says mini group studios intentional fashion oh i guess it's backwards but you guys get the idea the next thing i did was make all of these so these i actually did hand stamp and i just feel like these look nicer than having like the plastic things this market is both vintage and handmade stuff so that means i can sell some of my vintage pieces it's like 80 degrees today but i'm gonna watch the library because i think i've said this in a vlog before but i don't have a printer and i don't really want to invest in one right now for now what i've been doing is just going to the library to print there because it's like 10 cents a page or something like that. So I'm gonna go to the library and try to make a few things in Canva. Basically signage, like stuff that I can put in frames and then print it out there. I actually don't know if I'll get it done today, but if I do, I'll just print it. I do have this rack, which is small, but I do want to just go ahead and get another rack um, to put stuff on and maybe separate it by like mini group pieces and then vintage pieces and have like two different racks. Hi friends. So this morning I did some research on different POS systems for the market because this is another really big thing that I'm worried about for in-person sales. So I'm using Shopify right now. I've used Shopify since August. I'm kind of already committed to Shopify because all my stuff is on there. I know how to use it. All my analytics are already there. And as far as in-person sales go, I know you can also use Venmo, but you have to get a business account. I kind of just want everything in one place, if that makes sense. So then I was also looking at Square, which isn't a website, but it is like all the hardware and stuff. So most card readers, they'll charge you per like swipe, dip and tap if that makes sense. The Shopify one is like 2.7% for in-person sales. For the Shopify hardware, the most basic thing that you can buy is just the card reader for $49. I think you get free shipping with that too. The Square as of right now, the card reader is the same price and the fee for Square is 2.6% plus 10 cents. So it's a little bit less. This is my opinion, okay? Once again, I don't know anything. I think that the Shopify POS, if you already have Shopify, is really good because it keeps it all in order you're already paying for the plan so you wouldn't have to do anything on top of that if you don't have shopify and you haven't opened a site yet maybe look into square a little bit more i think for me i'm just gonna get the shopify pos so then i can keep all my finances in order so we're just gonna test it out so i'm gonna order this thing hopefully it's here on time i think it's pretty quick sorry that was a lot of information but i think that it might be useful to someone maybe I went to the scrap exchange and the scrap thrift, but I also found some yarn today, so I'm gonna throw it in. These two green colors. And then this is like one of my favorite colors. Uh, it's like a muted neon yellow, almost. I also put it next to this pink color, which is like a mohair acrylic blend, it says. Some vintage lion brand like that looks pretty old like these two colors together are my favorite color combo and then just some green mohair which would also look good with this pink but i don't know kind of just picked up a few things haven't bought yarn in a while not that i need to but i finished this top this morning i still need to weave in the ends of course and i just thought it would look cool with the drop stitch and i'm obsessed with the drop stitch right now hence why i did it in my last two videos quick try on that's what it looks like on yeah
So when I was at the thrift store today, I found all of these gold frames and I still needed a business card holder and I literally just walked past this one and it was like perfect. 50 cents. I just finished. I don't know why the camera won't pick up the green. Maybe it needs to be... Oh, there we go. It's like a matcha green color. It's super pretty. It's kind of like a skirt, but you can also wear it as a shirt if you want to. Gosh, I really want to keep this one. It's like the perfect swim cover-up. I got a package. It's the Shopify card reader. It came very quickly, which was awesome. So it's a tap and chip reader. It doesn't have swiping, which I feel like a lot of places don't have swiping anymore. Nice packaging. <laughs> it's very small. There's a dock you can put it on, but I didn't want to buy it yet. It does come with a charging cable as well. So I already have the POS app. I can't do this at the same time because I'm filming on my phone. I'm going to test it out and then I'll let you guys know how easy it was to set up. I got this beautiful rack off of Facebook Marketplace. I like that it's white because then it matches with my other one that I was going to bring. And it's also adjustable. And it's on wheels. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing because it might like be unstable, but I kind of like it for ease of like moving stuff around. Also, I just finished the shrug. Here's a try on of the shrug. So I ended up doing a little bit of a bell sleeve, as you can see. I did the sleeves a little bit shorter so they're not like hanging over your hand because bell sleeves are already like in the way all the time. So I thought, if it was a little bit shorter, it'd be more manageable as far as like everyday wear. I think I'm gonna start making smaller things um, instead of like any more bigger pieces. I do wanna make a bunch of these little crochet bows. Just have like a little bowl of these bows that you can pretty much just put on everything. But if you just slip a bobby pin, it looks kind of dumb with what I'm wearing right now, but because I wanna have a range of prices for people to explore. I also have a lot of my old projects that have just been sitting there that I'm gonna sell. like. A little hair bandana. I have a few bikinis that I don't want to sell online. These were all ones that I made for myself. And then I have a few vintage pieces of my own. Not stuff that I sourced intentionally, but stuff that's coming from my own closet. That's my update. And the leaf blowers are going right now, so I'm just gonna talk to you guys later. Three more days into the market. Today I'm gonna spend some time like finalizing these pieces because as you can see, we have some loose ends that I need to weave in. I also made a bunch of hair accessories this morning. So I need to weave in the ends on these. Tomorrow I'm gonna try to price everything and put it all in a spreadsheet. And then it's the market day. And I think I have everything like business-wise. I just need to finish up like the finishing touches, stuff like that. I added a little bow to the shrug. The ends need to be weaved in here. Same with this one, I think. These are two older pieces of mine. I think I'll put them up pretty cheap. This is a nightmare for me. If you guys know me, I hate weaving in ends. One more day into the market. I got this little table today, which I just covered with a crocheted blanket. It looks a little small, so I might have to move a few things around and kind of figure it out. I also have a ton of ribbon, so I kind of just tie them in little bows and people can take them for free. People can tie them in their hair, on their bags. This is the vintage rack, so I just need to price everything now. Today is the day. It's like 6.30, I'm gonna get ready, do my makeup. I think I'm equally nervous and excited. I can't really tell you. I already did my hair and makeup, so I'm just gonna sit here and think about what to wear. I thought I had an idea, but now I kinda wanna change my mind. So. Hi, 
It's a few days after the market, so I thought I would do a little wrap up. Just a little bit of background on this specific market. So the person that was putting on this market, she was having a porch sale and we kind of just got to talking and she mentioned that she was trying to plan out a market and I was like, I'll, I'm down if you need vendors. So this was technically like the first one that she put on at the venue that I was at. She like planned the whole thing. It turned out amazing. Rachel, if you're watching this, you did great such a fun experience and i had such a great time so i actually didn't have it that much stuff compared to a lot of other vintage sellers so i kind of just packed up the day of packed everything in those big ikea bags i'll insert a photo of the bags that i'm talking about but those are so good to haul like soft items in so i already had everything hung up as you guys saw and i just kind of like left it on the hanger and just put it in those bags and i just want to say shout out to elliot my boyfriend because he helped me with everything i honestly couldn't imagine doing this without him he helped me pack the car drove the car got me lunch like he's awesome so thank you i really appreciate him i definitely would recommend having at least one person to help you out depending on how much stuff you have like, you definitely could like do it alone but it would just take so much longer we actually live very close to the venue that i was at and those racks are so light so instead of breaking them down we just walked them over. On the way back, I actually bought some flowers, these flowers from the farmer's market to put in my booth because I thought that would be cute. I don't think anyone really noticed, but I did and now I have flowers, so. Since it was my first market, I didn't really want to invest in a tent because I live in a one bedroom apartment. Like we do not have that much room to be storing these big items. So I ended up setting up my booth inside, which was nice because it got a little hot during the day. One thing I will say, the venue was kind of like a pub. So the lighting was not great. It was fine when it was sunny out because the light would come in through the doorway, but there were parts of the day where it was cloudy and you couldn't really see anything. And then towards the end of the day at like three-ish, one of the vendors left a little early, so I was able to take their spot outside when it cooled off a little bit. That got me a lot more like foot traffic. I feel like most people were only coming inside for the bar, which is totally understandable, but I got a lot more foot traffic while I was outside. Also, if you knit or crochet, you know like the texture of the yarn is so important, and I feel like that was really hard to see in the dark but once you could see it in the sun it looked just so much nicer and like the colors and stuff like that so but i'm honestly glad i wasn't outside in the beginning of the day because it was hot and i didn't have a tent like i think i would have been sweating there was pros and cons to both situations i priced my vintage items pretty low because obviously my handmade items were a lot more pricey because a lot more time goes into those. So I wanted to have a good range of prices for people. So I decided that my vintage pieces would be at a little bit of a lower price point to kind of balance it out a little bit. At markets like this, it's kind of harder to sell your bigger items. Obviously people are coming to the market to find like multiple pieces and kind of hunt for stuff. Um, which makes it a little bit harder to spend all your money on one thing. People might want to buy a few smaller things rather than just one big thing. So keep that in mind, at least in my experience or like kind of my thought process. That's what I thought of it as. Like I said, get a good range of prices. And I also had a free bin of just ribbon that I thought people could tie on their bags, but not that many people grabbed them. And I was so surprised because um, I really like doing that. Like I have ribbons and stuff on all my bags yeah i still have so much left over so i didn't sell as many mini group pieces as i thought i would which is understandable now that i've explained like the pricing thing where like people want to buy multiple things rather than just one big thing but i will mention i did sell my most expensive item which was awesome this lady she just immediately went up to this piece and said i need this and I was kind of waiting for her to like elaborate on it. And she was like, no, like I need this. Pulls out her wallet. And then I was like, oh my gosh, awesome. Like I pulled out my card reader and she was like, oh, I can pay you in cash. So I had the item for $85 and she pulls out five twenties. And I was like, oh, let me grab you change. She's like, no, just keep it. So she just gave me like a hundred dollars, which is freaking awesome. That really just made me so happy with like how fast she made the decision to buy it. And then just like, you know, just bought it yeah that was just really cool so that's like the one thing that i'll mention as far as selling goes i'll also tell you guys how much i made like total so many other people were super complimentary to all of my mini group pieces and that face-to-face -face interaction is really cool because i've never had that before everything i've done is pretty much online but i do want to mention one big thing that i think people are concerned about a lot of the time when trying to start markets and stuff and that's how to take payment 
it can get confusing. Most people use Venmo or Cash, and then other people use Square. You guys know that I got the Shopify card reader, so I wanted to just talk a little bit about my experience using that. I freaking loved the Shopify card reader. I charged it the night before. It did not really run out of battery at all. It lasted the whole entire day. Everything was linked to my Shopify, which is the website that I use to sell, which just made things so much easier. I put everything that I was selling into the app. So when someone would pull it out, I didn't even have to check the price of it. I literally just would search it, tap, they would do their card thing or whatever, and it just worked so smoothly. I loved it. I also took cash for a few transactions. The card reader was honestly awesome. It was $51, they shipped it for free and now I'll always have it for any like in-person sales that I'll be doing. I know people do use Square as well. I would recommend the Shopify card reader if you already have Shopify. Like all my stuff's already in there and I don't really feel like switching over if I were to. Another big thing that I wanted out of this market was just socializing and meeting new people in a space that I kind of feel comfortable in, I guess I would say. I met so many cool people and I just really enjoyed like talking to people. I'm still fairly new to North Carolina, so the social aspect was just really fun. And it was at a bar, so it was kind of just like, everyone was kind of just hanging out and there was music. Also, <laughs> the business cards that I showed you guys earlier, I don't think anyone really took them on their own. So I ended up kind of just like starting to pass them out if people were looking at the mini group stuff. I'd be like, oh, here's a card if you wanna check out the website. So, I would say maybe they're not a necessity, but I always thought that they were. I'm still really glad that I have them on hand now. I don't have to like order them again if I need any. Now I just wanna mention kind of like selling online versus selling in person. Like they both have pros and cons. Selling online is nice. Like I style and model everything on my website. So you can kind of get an idea of what it would look like on someone and like in person on a hanger, you don't really get that effect. But being in person, you can get a better idea of what like the garment actually is, like how it feels the colors stuff like that so i think that's the benefit there was a fitting room there so if people wanted to try it on they could which was super nice so now the moment you've all been waiting for is how much did i make at my first market at my first in-person market i made around 315 dollars i also have no idea what other people make at these things i didn't really do any research on that before i don't really have a gauge on the number if it's good or bad just keep that in mind. I got my vendor fee back. I got my card reader fee back, which is kind of just my goal. The vendor fee for this market was $50, but overall I just wanted to kind of get some experience selling in person. Um, I definitely feel more confident to do other markets. At the same time, I don't have a lot of space to store stuff and I know people that do this for a living, like sell vintage clothes at markets. like. I don't know where you guys keep all your stuff. I just don't have the room to be storing that much stuff. So this might be like a once a month thing for me. So final thoughts, I really, really enjoyed my first market. It was so much fun. So yeah, I had a great time and I definitely cannot wait to do one next month, but I don't think I will be consistently doing these like every weekend or anything. I think it's a good addition to my online stuff. If you have any questions, I'm by no means an expert on this. Like I said, this was my first one, but I'll try to answer them for you or DM me if you wanna do that. Obviously there's so many factors that go into doing markets, like where you're located, you know, like how much foot traffic, if it's a popular market that's advertised really, really well and that's been going on for years. Um, those are all things that go into it. I really hope you enjoyed and I hope that I was transparent enough about like how much I made and stuff. So, you know, like maybe if it's worth it for you to do these or not. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like. Comment down below if you have any questions or if you want another one of these market vlogs. Also at the next market, I'll try to film more. I just... Do you know how freaking awkward it is to film in public? Like, I'm still not used to it and I've been making videos, but like, it's so awkward. Especially around a bunch of people that you just met and I don't want people to feel uncomfortable, so that's that. Other than that, make sure you subscribe if you want more videos like this. It really, really helps me out and it helps me know to keep making videos for you guys if you like them. So that's all I wanted to say about the market. Thanks for watching, bye.